Here's what happened last time on the Encourageable Party. Shaft and Falzern act quickly to end their surprise visit with the third sister. Able to utilize the effects of their invisibility to investigate the Elder's Keep. Meanwhile, Shakara and Mia learn of a potential civil war brewing in Heraklion. Despite the dangers of Shakara walking the streets, the Dragonborn and Mia search for Grimby, finding him safe and sound in Janela's home. Mia proves to be a woman of her word, curing the captain of his feeble-mindedness. And now, back to the adventure. You sound Irish now. <laughs> <laughs> the feeble mind <laughs> be messing with me mind. <laughs> I'm not the same. I don't feel right. <laughs> as soon as I hear Grimby yell, I'm going to run upstairs soon. Okay. Grimby, Grimby, there's much, much to tell you. You've been feeble minded. I don't know what that means, but it uh, was not pleasant. No. Granby. Oh, Granby, you are all right. Ah, oh, Shikara, you a sight for sore eyes. What, what, where are we? Uh, we in the city? Is it still under attack? We are in Heraklion, yes. The attack is over. Much has happened, Where's Grimby. Alamar? Ugh, Grimby, we, we have not time to explain to you right now. Is it okay to pick up your axe and follow us? We need to leave Heraklion. I think I can stand. He seems kind of a little wobbly, you know, like he hasn't moved in a few days, right? <laughs> gets gets to his feet, kind of has to sit back onto the bed, loses his balance a little bit, but gets up, shaking out his body, giving his neck a crack, retrieves his axe. Where are we be going now, then? Where are Shaft and Vulgin? And the others on, on the Rising Three, there were others. Uh, let me explain. No, there's too much. Let me sum up. <laughs> Alamar is dead. Good. Drag and Slava have left us to see to their own matters. Now, who the hell is Slava? It, it's okay, Grim. Yes. And happened. Drag. Who are... <laughs> they were our allies. Shaft and Falzarin we left in a cave outside Godom. We are to meet them back there. We came back to Heraklion after leaving to save you. How long was I out? Uh, how long was I out? Days. <laughs> do you, do you know the days? Travel all the way to Golem. Must have been a, a week at least. Okay, no, um, Grimby, we can travel. We can teleport to Golem. Much has happened. That's very useful, and I, th I thank you greatly, Mia. This is all not going to make much me a sense. Kind ship. Well. You're welcome. I did give you my word. I don't know that you were with it at the time, but my word means something to me. I'm afraid I don't remember, but I I appreciate you living up to it. Okay, Grimby, we've made... There are some enemies, there are some friends, there's some things that are happening. There's no more attack. Don't worry about Alamar right now, but we need to take you back to the keep. We're getting some artifacts and trinkets from Isabella. You don't know who that is either, but after that... We can go through a portal which teleports us back to Goldum, back to Falzern and Shaft. And all will be explained there. Shikara, you get for the third time the sensation, the goose flesh, and the shudder across your body. And then less than a minute, another one. Two immediate instances of it. Shikara, are you alright? You kind of puts a hand on your shoulder. Yeah, what's happening? I am fine. I believe Isabella is working on the portal. I hope she gets us our artifacts. Yes, let's go back to the keep and see if she has them or knows where to get them. All right, Grimby. You gonna make it? You need a hand? I think I'll be all right. I'll lean on Shakara if I need it. When was the last time you have eaten? I, uh... Not since I was docked in the port. Let us stop in Janela's kitchen on the way out. I'm sure she will not mind. Scour through the cupboards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Find a can of soup. <laughs> <laughs> can of spinach that Grimby downs like Popeye. <laughs> I that feel a mighty right better. 
Okay, and you just want to head on back to the keep then? Aye, aye, Captain. Got what we came I for. I do. Yeah, got nothing else to worry about. Yeah, and, and on, on the way, like, Grimby's going to be like, What to me boat? Did you find her? Where'd you find me? I believe the boat is destroyed. I think she's lost. No, not another one. I know. She's getting to become a habit. And we did find you on the boat. Yeah, do you remember what happened? Well, the, uh, the port was attacked. And, uh, I grabbed the nearest folk that I could find to get on board, and we ran. There's nothing we could do. Out on the sea for uh, about a day, and they found us again. Attacked us. Alamar insisted on retrieving that, uh, that vial, that glowy thing that all you hid on me boat. I tried to stop him, but he minded me. I am truly sorry for that. Hey, it's not for your fault, Shikara. We're in this together. Yes, we are. I'd like to clarify that if I see a treasure chest full of platinum, I would stop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sorry, it's too late. That was like five minutes I back. Mean, there's no time to turn if around. If there's loot there's no on the streets, I want to take it. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, is there somewhere else we should be stopping? Didn't want to. I didn't want to rush you. <laughs> no, I think it'll take us a couple hours anyway. By the time we get back to the keep. Yeah. How long will it take us round trip? Go get Granby and come back. Oh, less than an hour, really. I mean, like, because oh, okay. because of the spell, it was basically a direct shot right to Janelle maybe a little little longer an hour since you stopped that to have something to eat some of the some of this the summation for Grimby I think since Isabella had warned us that there are essentially two factions of Heraclonians now and some of them may not be so friendly to me I would want to just hurry back to the keep okay well, yeah, I guess if you can Teleport now, you've got no use for old Captain Chum. There will always be reasons that we will need you by our side. I uh, appreciate that, Shikara, and uh, if you're still in any type of trouble, you you know I'd be there to help you. I know. We'll get you off this island, Grimby. We'll get you to a port that has ships. This port was destroyed. I uh, hope they can rebuild it right quick, otherwise how they be getting in supplies? They do seem to be working on the city. Shikara, do you not want to check out Elstaff's shop? Come on, he's such a tinkerer. You saw what those handcuffs did. They saved my life. Yes, he may have trinkets we could use. And then I would not owe a favor to Isabella. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how we would know what we're looking at, but we could at least go try. Uh, would he sell to us? Since the last time he saw you, you were attacking him. I mean, we could see if he's even there. We gave him a pretty big bonk on the head, you know what I'm saying? I guess it couldn't hurt. Isabella did say she needed more time. I could use a bit more time to stretch my legs. Alright, yeah. Since Isabella needs more time anyway, let's just go check it out. He might not even be there. Okay. And making your way to Titterman's shop? You do find uh, it's to be dark. No lights within. It does look like no one's in there. At least from the... Because, you know, remember, he had kind of like a front display window uh, inside. You know, he had a bunch of what kind of looked like like a showroom almost, right? For, right. Uh, a bunch of di kind of different types of trinkety stuff. I'll try the door. Is it locked? It is locked, yes. It looks like no one is home. Do you know how to pick a lock? Grimby? I am uh, afraid I'm a bit more useful with my axe. Okay. I don't know, Shikara. I just feel like there might be something in there labeled mind controlling artifacts. <laughs> <laughs> or anti mind controlling artifacts. <laughs> Is the door like right out on the main road? The front door is, yes. Is there a back door to this place? Let's go walk around the side. And you, again, you find kind of another, like, 
back alley, like loading alley, you know, kind of thing. Uh, a little wider than what was behind Janela's home. But there is a back door, uh, a man door, and a, uh, a window to the right of it. And to the left of it is a larger, what would be like a bay door, like a larger Wait, roll-up so a door. man door and an orc door. <laughs> a man door and a giant door. <laughs> Walk into a bar. <laughs> All right, and is this like a solid wood door? Like, what kind of door is it? Yes, it does look like a wooden door. There's no panes of glass in this one, but again, there's that that, that viewing window I, yeah. next to it. Or it's not very large. The door is locked. The door is also locked. Yes. Grimby, put your axe in the, in the slit here, and just let's give it a little tap tap with my hammer. I I realize I may not be the best person to be bringing this up, but is this not beyond us? Are we the kind of people? That would steal from someone. Breaking into Janela's place was different. We had to save Grimby. All right, I mean, he tried to kill us. He may not have known the full story. Is this not for the good of Aspara? We have other ways to get these things that we need. In exchange for things with Isabella? That is on me. That is my burden to bear. You would rather owe her than stumble upon, and I, by that I mean break into Elstoff's workshop. I do not believe I am so far gone as to think this that this is a good solution. You see Grimby is kind of peering into this small window. I it uh, be mighty dark in there. I not make out too many things, but it looked like the, some paper. Uh, I think that's a workbench. Uh, I don't know what could be else could be in there. All right, Shikara, you're probably right, but it's just when Aspara is in such dire straits, I just the Niyogi get me so angry. I just want to do anything to defeat them. Yes, and if we had no other means, I would agree. What be a Niyogi? It is a bug that infests the Volgareg Mountains. The pest that plagues Aspara, Grimby. I uh. That sound rather serious. And this Isabella woman can help us with those things? Is that that's what we're doing now? Guess so. She said she can procure items for us that will keep the Niyogi from being able to control our minds. Though, now that you are with us, we shall need one more. If you will accompany us... Mind? Uh, uh, if, if there be anything that can protect our minds, I, I, I assure you they be very precious. If there's something in here, then uh, I think I want to be looking. Come on, Grimby. Put your axe down, and then like, kind of like a chisel and a hammer. Just kind of wedge yeah, the door open. Yeah, yeah, like open. In the, between the door frame and the door. Just kind of pop it before Shikar can say anything. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna look, be a lookout again. I'll look to see if okay. anybody sees us doing this. Hey, Shikar, I think Mia be right if they be messing with our minds. I can't have that happen again. If you are both in agreement, then yes. See if we can get in. All right, Mia, give her a swing. Tap, tap. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, as you're the force of your hammer and the blade of Grimby's axe kind of splinter between the door and and the the door frame, like a you know, jimmying it with a credit card, a medieval, yeah, it's like a crowbar, <laughs> a medieval credit card. <laughs> yeah, <jimmy>. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you just splinter the wood around the locking mechanism and the door swings ajar. <laughs> well, that was pretty easy. All right, Grimby. Can you see in the dark? I don't think we should turn I... in. No. Oh, you stay on guard. Mia and I will go look. Okay, I, I need a lookout. Okay. You see him starts uh, holding his axe out with arms straight. He starts to do some squats to get the blood flowing, you know, and <laughs> get, his, get his limbs working properly again. I appreciate the view for a minute before I go search. Oh my gosh. You <laughs> guys, listen, the Shikara Grimby thing was from the one shot. It what didn't exist until you just made it exist. No, it did. When, you were flirting a little how, bit before. Who, where? Okay. Where is my spell? I would like to detect magic. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Mia, though, as you swing the door farther open, immediately in front of you is a toy soldier. You see, though, quickly that the the little gem in oh, its the forehead, light, 
is extinguished. Nice. It seems it's 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 actually sitting there, kind of attached on what I get something like a like would be like a, a coat hanger, right? Like something that keeps it upright, clearly, so it can be like worked on from from all like three sixty degrees around it, and it does appear to be inactive. Inanimate. Okay. Is detect magic one that I can ritual cast? Yep. So I can take ten minutes if I think we have it, and then detect magic for 10 minutes. Right. Okay. Um, Shakara, I'm going to detect magic, but it's going to take me a minute so I can conserve my my magic. All right, I will start the search while you do that. Sure. I'll look while I concentrate as well. Okay. So as Grimby had been able to make out in the, the dim light in the workshop now, again, more of a Kind of illuminating a little more of it as, as the door is open. But I are you going to close it, shut it up behind you? Just leave Grimby think, up there kind of? Yeah, I would. But. Is it? Is there a lot of, like, would people from outside be able to see light coming through, like, out the front windows? Oh, no. So immediately inside, it's not a very large room. It's the building is uh, quite small in itself, but it maybe is about a 20 by 20 foot room. And you do see there it looks like to be a, a closed door that could really only lead to the front shop. So, no, definitely from the from the out front window, there wouldn't be any type of additional light shining through or anything. Yeah, like we're that. not like lighting torches or anything. I would say leave the door open a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, leave the door open a bit in case we need to make a hasty retreat. Okay. And hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us in the ass. Just a crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> There's a workshop of Alisoft's. It's, it's very crowded. There's there's you know s- scrap metal all over the place. Again, you know, on this this workbench that Grimby was able to make out, there's just piles of of papers, you know, parchment, schematics of things, small little little trinkets kind of littered all over the place. Like there's what looked like uh, some some uh, mechanical birds. I think you had spied uh, when you were in the shorefront the first time here. A lot of a lot of stuff like that, kind of random assortment of things. Uh, is there like maybe something specifically that might draw your eye that you're looking for? Something labeled anti mind control <laughs> artifact. I'm just some kidding. rings or amulets or brooches, right? Or Bru- uh, brooches. Uh, brooches. Brooches. <laughs> Find the brooches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so like we previously discussed sort of that he creates the mechanical shells for these things and they're enchanted elsewhere, correct? That we Well, um, do our characters I mean as or? as far as the the like safety shell thing that was certainly the case, but as you had kind of mentioned, he did create the sh- shackles of shackling. Right, that's true. Which do have magical properties. And the metal men that somehow work. Yeah, so for sure, like, the first ten minutes, I guess I'm just looking for jewelry and trinkets, but once I'm detecting magic, I want to look at anything that's that's glowing to me, and I'll point it out to Shakara. And... Yeah, and any anything I find that I think might be useful, I'll kind of, like, put in a pile on the desktop so that she can easily glance over it. Oh, I wish okay. we had Falzern's bag. There are, there, there are many drawers in this desk, right? Um, it's kind of what looks like a a, almost like a storage area kind of again spending this 10 minutes waiting for the detect magic to kick in you rifling through you do you do certainly find like an assortment of uh silver and gold banded rings a few stones set in what looks like what look like an amulet that you can maybe start again putting into that pile that you mentioned shakara in one corner there is a what looks like a large barrel yeah are you you interested in in the pile of, of papers at all. I assume basically you're giving like as thorough a search as you're, you can in the 10 minutes waiting for the spell to activate, correct? Yeah, I'll take a quick look at any papers and just see what, what they're about. See if there's anything interesting. Just being nosy. Yeah, well, in this pile of papers, it does, again, look like uh, schematics for some of the mechanical prototypes, like the, the little flitting bird, the miniature birds. Uh, any notes and scrawled on it are written in gnomish, which, of course, Shakara, you are able to read, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, leaving, again, large, there's there's stacks, there's papers strewn over, there's rolls kind of all over the place, and, and looking through these, you, you do actually find the schematics for the, the toy soldiers, you find uh, drawings of 
additional uh, mechanical creatures, uh, a large cobra, and one for kind of a humanoid, a humanoid mechanism wielding two large shields, uh, another type of uh, similar, like kind of a elongated body with, with like spiked spoked wheels and claws, and what looks like more freshly annotated actually the parchment is not quite as aged or uh or you know creases from unfurling and refurling but actually the schematics for the mechanical dragon that uh was fought by some of the party and you do discover schematics that are not written in gnomish these are actually written in sylvan and they are schematics of Set, uh, of armor pieces. Oh, this is interesting. What'd you find? This appears to be... armor. The armor? It's written in Sylvan. Everything else is written in Gnomish. Hmm. What does it say about the armor? Basically, it's like a diagram. And different parts of it being labeled... Uh, for like on the on the helm, it uh, kind of describes its function, or its you know what it's supposed to do. Should it be constructed and, and enchanted? The helm itself offers a, a disguise self ability. You know, a set of gauntlets that uh, blast out magical energy. A pair of boots that allow basically the wearer like a fleet of foot to to be able to enhance their jumping ability. A chest plate that enhances the wearer's strength and constitution. This is what we're looking for? It would make sense. Though, why the diagram is here, I do not understand that. And he's working with Isabella, I thought. He created this thing? I do not know. How old does that schematic look? They're, they look quite war- uh, quite worn. Could be. Look it. Or mayhaps it was given to him by someone else, since it is not in his native language. True. I believe we shall take this with us, and I'll stick it in my pouch. Good idea, Shikara. Now, I know we're pushing the limits for what we think is right, even just being in here. But don't you think it right that we give Grimby the ship we owe him? Point to the. How do you mean? point to the rings and the stones that we found. I think we should let Grimby take this towards his new ship. I know we have no use for these material things. No, I I believe there are other ways in which we can get a ship for Grimby. I am concerned about you, Mia, that, that you're even suggesting this. This is far outside your character. I, I just said, I, I realize that we're pushing the bounds of what we think is right. But at this point, what is right, what is wrong? Up is down, down is up. You're in a coven, Shikara. And yet, I do not feel that stealing from Tinderman is the best course of action. Who just tried to kill us with a giant mechanical dragon. Maybe best to... I almost died twice, never, Shikara. That we were never here to begin with. We do not want to raise alarms. It is bad enough that I am taking this piece of paper. If we take a whole lot of other things, it will be quite obvious someone was here. I'll kind of like huff away and start trying to detect magic. I am sorry that you were hurt. I am sorry I was not there to aid you in your time of need. Shikara, you were. You saved my life, and I'll forever be grateful. I just... I'm all confused about Isabella and you and what's going on. What is going on is that I have been given power. Power that I hope to wield to better Aspara, to save this land. Power in itself is not evil. It is how the wielder chooses to use it. Or so I believe. So I hope. I'm grateful you used that power to save me. And I will continue to. You are my ally. 
I agree. I'm not disagreeing with that. I just, if there's a reason for my behavior being so erratic, I think you know why. A lot has just happened. It has. It has been a trying few days. I'm a little confused. And I'm just trying... Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to get the heck off this island. I believe it would be best to leave as little evidence of our passing as possible. Okay, let's see if I can find anything magical that gives us any more clue as to what we're working with. Or if anything magical can help us instead of trading favors with Izzy. That would be for the best. Just to be clear, the uh, the armor command is like for each piece it is kind of its own roll of parchment, just so you didn't think it was like all on a single roll. So it is. it's like ten pieces of paper. Well it would One, be two, three, four, five, six, six pieces of paper? You only listed Well, four. again, a, a pair of gauntlets, a pair of boots. So one, two, three, f- like four, four piece, four, four rolls of uh, parchment. These four rolls of paper that I stole. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, just so, so that's clear. Mia, you detect magic in this room. You are drawn to the barrel in the corner. And you're drawn to, to many of the rings that Shikara has, has piled up uh, on, on, I assume, on the workbench. It seems they have been enchanted in some way. Okay. Uh, obviously, the toy soldier is also emanating magic. I'll go check out the barrel. Okay. And Shakara, what do you do? There's still some papers probably to leaf through. Uh, yeah, I'll continue leafing, just just being nosy. And I want to actually take a good look at the uh, metal men schematics, just kind of see how they work. I'm pr- I don't know if I'd understand any of it, but... Okay. Just in case. You understand all languages, even physics. I meant like the the actual physical work. <laughs> ah, the language. <laughs> the, f- the language of the physics. natural world even order. Science. <laughs> the language of love. Oh gosh. Ooh. All right, you and Grimby can go get busy while I keep looking for magic. <laughs> Mia, there's a barrel. What would you like to do? It is, you know, there's a lid on it. Oh gosh, if it's phlogiston. I mean, I don't know what I would do with it anyway. Um, is there a way to, like, <laughs> if it's freaking Danzig? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> is there a way to, like, pop the top just to even, like, look, sniff, whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can definitely um, open the cover of it. And as you do, this yellow glow begins to emanate from it. This swirl of rainbow Ooh. liquid. You see, the barrel is about uh, only a quarter full. Uh, it's definitely, if it was full, it's been, a lot of it has been depleted. Shakara, Alstoff had phlogiston. What would he have to do with this? I know not. That seems odd. Right? I thought that was Erica's thing. What? I'm so confused. I guess just leave it here. Do you have any more vials from Campbell? Do I? <laughs> <laughs> I believe you cut me off at one point. In time. Just take a sam- Just take a sample. Just a quick sample. You do not have any Campbell vials from the Golden Egger. Do I see a vial on the shelf? There, certainly, a container could be found within. <laughs> time out. Workshop. Does Elsa have a shelf that says healing potions? Just like. No. <laughs> no healing potions. That would be amazing. But you you would be able to find uh, some type of uh, of container, yeah, like a like a vial. Okay. To be able to. Uh, I would like to take a little sample. vial of phlogiston, put the lid back on. And uh, for the record, I guess the type of magic from that phlogiston would probably be uh, maybe transmutation. I have an amulet of disguise. Huh. Good to know. Oh, that's what's making me human. Wow. Okay, Lena. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> cut that out. Dang it, you're not. You're not going to cut it out. Um, okay, so I'll go from the barrel to the rings. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, again, you, you get, like, you don't know what the rings do, but you do get the schools of magic. Uh, there is one that is, is conjuration. Uh, there is a, one that's emanating evocation magic. Uh, or uh, the uh, One of the amulets is emanating evocation magic. It's an amulet. Okay. Yes. Yeah, an amulet with evocation. A, a gold, kind of very plain ring is, is the one emanating 
What was the first school I said? Conjuration. Shakara, these these are giving off magic. This ring here, some type of conjuration magic, and there's an evocation magic emanating from this amulet. Does that mean anything to you? Do you, Would they be useful to us? I mean, useful against mind control? I'm not sure. Falzern might know more. Are they worth taking for him to examine further? If we take them, should we leave behind some gold to compensate? I could, yes. Or would it be better, since it's only two pieces, to just abscond with them? The other thing is I don't really know what they do, so how much are they worth, I'm not sure. Put them in your pocket. We can deal with it later. I agree. So I put the amulet and the ring in my pocket. I don't want to wear any of them right now. And I'll continue to search for magic in the shop. Um, I'm going to stay in the back part of the shop right now. But I don't know how much time I've left. But I would like to slowly, sneakily make my way to the front. With uh, Still with your, with your thorough view of the papers, though, there are a few more that probably would catch your eye. Okay. Maybe a few that kind of, they might not mean anything to you, but they would certainly be interesting. Uh, specifically, there there's a schematic for what looks like some type of staff or, or, or not a staff, what I mean, some type of like tripod. There's something that, it's got three three legs, uh, like, you know, a tripod. And they would, they would hold some type of rod, like, like a staff. And, and uh, as far as what is written for, like, descriptions, it just kind of labels the legs, of course, the, the staff itself, and then what would be is kind of scrawled uh, at the top of the staff. It just is labeled as a housing unit. And there's it's kind of like this crescent moon as if you would s- slot something inside of it. And this one is also written in Sylvan. So it's like three legs with a staff that goes this way or this way? Straight up. It would go straight up into the air. So almost like a peace symbol but without the circle. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. Like a vertical a vertical staff held up by these three legs. In addition to that, there looks to be what what kind of looks like a work order. Uh, it's it's not a schematic or it doesn't have any drawings or anything. It is written in common. And basically it outlines uh, a need for something that sounds exactly what like what you're looking for, something to protect a being from manipulation of, of their mind, of their consciousness. It's basically just instructions of written to directly to Alsof Tinnerman to create something like this. And at the bottom of it is signed by Samuel Coltis and has a kind of a, a stamp, it looks like, of the paladin's symbol, the, the you know, this tower emanating a light kind of encased and encircled in, in a ring. Mia, look at this. Yeah? There's a note asking Tinnerman to create the very thing that we are looking for. Whoa. Can we tell when this was written? There doesn't appear to be any type of dating on it at all, no. Comparing the ages of, like, paper we've seen? Yeah, well, it, compared to, like, the specifically the schematics for the armor, this note was written much more recently than those were drawn up, for sure. Perhaps we take that in our pocket as well? To what end? I don't know. I believe it's enough that we saw it. I do not... It's true. Do you... I'm going to continue to look. Yes. This gives me hope that may- maybe something here. Yeah, I wish there was a, a drawing. It's just an order, though. I'll keep looking. That would be too helpful, I assume. Right. So Sh- <laughs> Shigara, you've made your way to the front of the shop. Yes. There's a door between us and it, yeah? Correct, yes. I'll slowly open it up and see if there's anything there first. Yeah, and you see the the door opens immediately to like behind the the counter of, of the shop. There is a, a little register sitting on, on top of it. Uh, it does look like to to the right of the register, uh, kind of a display case kind of thing, like you would maybe find at like a jewelry shop or something. Just with again some more of the the mechanical structures with 
uh, creations inside of it. More, more like animals. You know, there there is like a, a miniature, like would kind of look like maybe like a gardener snake or something. In addition to again some of the, some of the some of the birds and that kind of stuff. They look like they would probably more than anything serve as like a child's toy or something like that. Further into the shop, Sparky, come to me. And Sparky appears from uh, from the little d- pocket dimension that he resides in most of the time. Go on ahead into this room. Let me know if there's any anyone or any thing there that would object to my being there. And Sparky crosses the threshold into the room, kind of flying about. You know, you're seeing what well, you're seeing through his eyes, obviously. No, I just want him to uh, go in there and then telepathically communicate with me. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, he uh, has no trouble flying in and moving around the space. Again, he kind of moves past and like over that counter into what would, you know, be like that showroom kind of area with, with again, more more of more of his the past items that he's created uh, on display, basically, right? As if like, hey, if you want some of this, you can come in and commission it kind of thing, right? And it doesn't seem to be any trouble. There are no, there are no any, there aren't any like toy soldiers or anything deactivated or otherwise uh, in the front of his shop. I will go in the room then. Searching for, for something like again snooping around or snooping, but specifically searching for more rings or amulets or anything. Um, but yeah, I was just looking to see what's there too. Right, right. Why don't uh, Shakara you roll me an investigation check then? And Mia, you just you're kind of getting again more more uh, more rings with uh, similar types of, of magic off of them. There's really nothing um, nothing else that looks different like or out of place or like there there are you don't see any other uh, constructs back there or anything like that. Do I see anything that would look like a secret compartment or a safe? Do you want to do an investigation for something like that as well? Yeah, sure. Okay, is there somewhere in the room specifically you'd like to look? Um, so this is just a workshop. Like, does he have living quarters anywhere or anything like that? No, no, there there aren't, no. Maybe on the workbench somewhere. Sorry, Shakara, what was your investigation? Five. <laughs> Mine's 12. <laughs> I'm above average. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> So Shakara, I imagine what you're kind of rooting around like the front counter on like the other side of it, right? Which would be what Tinner would be facing if he was addressing a customer kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, the employee side. Right, right, right. Yeah, and there are uh, like some sliding doors to reveal compartments underneath what would be the showcase with what looks like more inventory, uh, even like again, more raw materials as well. It seems like Elsoff has quite the collection of, of various items that uh, clearly he's been stockpiling uh, or coming in from somewhere because it appears that almost every square inch of any additional compartment that doesn't house something that would be for sale has like components and, and like sc- scraps of metal, uh, gears, boxes of gears and that kind of stuff. Numerous size and colored crystals around as well. I get distracted by the crystals because they're pretty. <laughs> oh, they're very sparkly. Yeah. <laughs> Sparky, stay by the door. Alert me if someone comes near. Mia, your investigation uh, at the workshop. Yeah. With a 12, you said. With a 12. With a 12. Rooting through more of the drawers, and, and there is a large cupboard underneath this as well, the doors swing outward. And again, filled with components and scrap materials and tools as well of course tinkering tools you know pliers and screwdrivers and and little uh, ball peen hammers and that kind of thing underneath a, a, a box of like loose bolts and screws though you do find what looks like an indentation in the the wooden the wood floor what would serve as the floor of, of this this cabinet okay as if it's like a false, what's the word? Yeah, as if you <laughs> could like put a finger in there and, and pry something open, yes. All right, let's do it. All right, you do kind of have to pull some stuff out and empty it, right, to sure. to be able to, to open this up. But it is, again, it's like a, a 
false floor that kind of once you press into that indentation it sinks in it's like recessed mm-hmm. and slides away inside you find a box all right i will how big is this box can i pick it up oh yeah yeah you can pick it up it looks like it is made of sapphire it is a blue box and maybe like a you know eight by eight by eight cube it's very cubic and uh, on the front of it it looks like there are two keyholes shakara shakara yes what did you find i found a false floorboard here and look inside was a this box it's like got keyholes though you see shakara's stop and like mouth hang open what what i can sense something's wrong what's happening that is the box that was sent to me and Campbell. What? By Dendar. By Eliz- by Isabella. By Dendar or Isabella? Isabella. Okay, so Isabella has her reaches on Alstaff. We kind of knew that. What what comes in these boxes? That was how I made my pact. The initial pact that I thought was with Dendar. But in reality, was Isabella. Wait, Dendar isn't... What? Dendar, the Serpent Mother. There is no Dendar? There is. Isabella worships her. The Coven worships her. She is where we get our power. I do not know why this box is here. All right, well, I guess we should put it back, right? If we're not supposed to be here. Can I open it? Yeah, and, and Mia says, like, you're handling it, like, your tech magic's still going on. It's emanating, like, a, a very powerful magical presence. Yeah. I left this with Campbell. Is it yours, though, or is it his? That's what I don't get it. Is it all stuffs? It was mine and Campbell's, unless this is a different box. There could be more than one, I guess, but this looks very particular. I, I want to try and open it. It does open. Inside, there are two blue keys. Also seemingly constructed of the same material the box is made of. I do not understand. Is this not your property? Should we bring it with us? Why would Alstaff have it tucked away? I do not know, but let us bring it with us. We know Isabella was in here with him. I did find a few more rings, Shikara. Um, I guess take everything magical, just in case... Yes. Let us take it all. She's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Leland didn't say how many, but I found some more rings, right? So it's, you can have time to make them up in between next session if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Was there anything worthwhile up front, Shikara? Anything else I should take with us? I did not see anything, but maybe you should take a glance. Okay, it's safe to go out there? Yes, Sparky is standing guard. All right, be right back. Detect magic out here. There are many similar, similar, you know, reactions to to the effects of your spell out here. It's, uh, some of the mechanical animals are emanating magic, and uh, many of the other items on display. It seems like there's not just a pure. There isn't purely a mechanical aspect to any of Alstoff's creations. It, it does seem like there is at least some type of minimal, as most of them are, magic that is imbued into them to allow them to function. P- perhaps it's some type of, uh, like, the way he powers them, or, or maybe something like that. So, would I be aware of, like, what type of magic I'm trying to sense? Yeah, yeah. If there is a specific type, you you the the spell does tell you right uh, what what type. Uh, a lot of it uh, a lot of it is transmutation, especially some of the the items that look like they would be something that moves, like uh, like the the soldiers, the toy soldier back there also was uh, like transmutation. So, what type of magic would protect one's mind? That's what like would Mia know that is what I'm. Because I don't think Elena knows that, so I'm just like, what kind of magic can I look for? <laughs> Take a crystal for Shikara. 
<laughs> yeah, I think we're really so putting pretty. his improv skills to the test today because he did not expect us. <laughs> <They're, laughs> he's doing great, though. Pat's back. No comment. <laughs> You're the one who said, is there anywhere else you want to go? We could have just, just gone right to the keep. So, Mia, you would know that specifically abjuration magic would be something that would be key to, to be searching for, or anything that emanate, would emanate that would definitely draw your interest. I will specifically assess the items and try to find some abjuration magic. Near the front of the shop, kind of uh, in that store window, right? Like where maybe someone oh, down dang. the street would okay. do like window shopping. Be very careful then. There looks like to, uh, there is a uh, like a circlet, like something you would you know wear over your your forehead. It's kind of actually looks very simple, uh, especially for something to be in the front showcase. It does look like this uh, very thin leather band, and uh, a tiny what looks like to be a diamond, kind of wrapped into it that would kind of settle in the front. Uh, if you were to wear it, it would be like in that third eye position kind of thing. You know, in your yeah. forehead. It is giving off abjuration magic. I will... Can anyone see me from the window? From the street, uh, it does look deserted. Deserted right now. I'm going to take that circlet. Pocket that. Because that makes sense to me. Being on the head and everything like that. And is there anything else um, similar to that? Or a section that might have other um, headpieces, things like that then? That does uh, seem to be very unique, actually, in the collection. Okay. Uh, as there aren't, like, armor... There's no armor pieces or even weapons on display here, right? Right. It, it is, again, very, very, like, come in and buy something for, for your friend or your loved one or something, like, some very, very trinkety stuff. So in the drawers that Shikara's pulled out, are there any um, stones that match the magic coming from this diamond? There were many inert gems that had no magic to them at all. So no magic swords, what you're saying? No, I'm afraid. No I'm sorry, weapons. Shigar, no magic no. swords. <laughs> Which I th I think the, obviously, outside of them being written in silver, the, the schematics of of the, the weapons and the, the armor and stuff, completely different than anything that is displayed in the shop whatsoever. I mean, of course, just the fact that he has mechanical men, you know, with bladed weapons and bludgeon weapons is also very strange compared to the front he's putting on with this store. Um, actually I take back calling Shakara. In the front of the shop, can Shakara see me at all? I mean, what are, what are you doing, Shakara, with the box? Yeah. Does it fit in my pouch? Mm, you could... it too big? Give it to Grimby. He's got a big pouch. Uh, Grimby is very svelte. He has no such pouch. Uh, I would say, like, you could definitely put, like, the rings and the amulets and stuff in, in your, your, like, adventuring bag, but the the box itself is, is a little large to to shove inside of there. I would be cradling it then, like it is a very precious thing. But I will walk back up to the front to see what Mia's doing. Okay, and you're just leaving the keys inside of it, or are you removing them from the box at all? No, leave them inside. Okay, gotcha. So I don't lose them. Shakara, we take things that are useful. Are you to still us. feeling the same way you felt before we found this box? We could buy Grimby a ship. We can get him a ship another way. I agree, but Grimby's useful to us. What's the story with this box here? We're gonna bring it with us. Okay. All right. I did find a circlet up in the showcase over there. I. uh... Anything else? We probably should be leaving. We've been here a while. It's giving off a kind of magic I think seems promising. Let's leave then. Let's head back to the keep. <sighs> not if we're getting, not if we're not getting Grimby his boat. Guess we'll go. Yeah, and uh, you see, Grimby is now has moved on to push-ups. One thousand and three, one thousand and four. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, Are you naming ships or doing push-ups? <laughs> 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 the rising one thousand and three. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been since I've had a chuckle Mia, but uh, it's much appreciated. <laughs> You're welcome, Grimby. It's time to go. Let's uh try to jimmy this door back into its place. Sparky, come. Sparky flits out after. You're just going to leave him <laughs> out? You're going to leave him on your shoulder? or? Yeah, for now. Has Grimby ever met Sparky? Sparky, Grimby. Grimby, this is my pet, Sparky. Hey, uh, it'd be nice to meet you there, Sparky. <laughs> he kind of reaches out his three-fingered hand to, like, <laughs> shake the pseudo-dragons. 
<laughs> uh, does he do any tricks? He is Shake a, a claw. wonderful creature. But do not Shake talk about a claw. <laughs> he is highly intelligent. I mean, no offense, there's Berkey. I'll nod to him. I know what it's like to be, uh, to be a being of low intelligence lately, and uh, certainly wouldn't want to undermine you. He appreciates that. Back to the keep. Back to the keep. Back to the keep like there's nothing in our pockets. <laughs> we ain't got nothing. Jingle, 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 jingle as you walk down the street. <laughs> and you, of course, do make it back to the keep. Moving through the open portcullis back to the great hall. Its doors still open. The uh, the tincture that you knocked over on your way out there, Shikara, still left discarded. <laughs> In the Great Hall, Isabel is no longer there. You see Halsa is back to the table, kind of huddled over a, 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 a new rolls of, of, of like paper. And there are st- like two more wizards that have been back into the hall. You see Halsa is just kind of pointing to various spots on, on, on the, the parchment that she has. Isabella's two bodyguards are still stationed at the very back of the Great Hall. Again, Elder Good herself, not here. Before we enter the keep, Mia, probably best we do not mention our side trip to Tinnerman's. Oh, definitely not. I'm with you. Halsa, where is Isabella? Halsa, wordlessly, as you've never heard Halsa speak, I believe she was the, the, the wordless one. She kind of just motions her head to the portal. It is working. Gives you a nod. Do you know when she will be back? We've given her time. She shakes her head, no. We have some things to attend to. We shall try and return. And she acknowledges, yep. Mia, shall we go back to Goldham? Should we not wait for Isabella? She said two hours. She said a few. Is that not two? Is that a couple and a few? What's a couple and a few? What's the difference, guys? Few is three to four hours. <laughs> few is three to four? Wow, I'm all screwed up. Thanks, Mom, for teaching me. Hey, <laughs> out on the high seas, the difference between a couple and a few could be life and death. There, Mia. Ah, well, again, take it up with Mrs. Uh, Brightwood. I guess we should go back to <laughs> Goldham. I really hope Shaft and Falzer are there waiting. And I would like to get some things... Put away safely. Will they be safe where Isabella can travel to them? So mayhaps we don't leave them there. True. What's the plan? Mayhaps we don't discuss that here. Definitely. Let's go. Grimby, this is going to be fun. Aye. Follow Shikara. You see that Halsa has turned back to the the two wizards she's speaking with. Uh, Both of them kind of give her a nod. And one of them says you overhear them say to her as soon as cultus has arrived we'll bring him to the keep and they turn on their heel out of the great hall as uh halsa rolls up the parchment the parchment hmm. you hear that shikara why didn't she make more freaking portals that were in places that were convenient for me <laughs> dang <laughs> have it let's go find the boys shikara Tell them of what we've found. Yes, good idea. And I'll go over to the portal and say the activation word. Okay, and uh, it appears to be functioning. It does respond to the activation. Grimby, follow closely, please. Hey, right behind you, Shara. And we'll go to the cave north of Goldham. Stepping into the hallway, anything different in here, aside from one change, one of the doors appears to have a large V carved into it. Do I know which door it is? It is the door that leads to Victor. Who? Does it look like it was carved professionally or like scrappily by a rapier? (laughs) It just looks like someone has carved into the wood. (laughs) Does it look like Shaft's been here? (laughs) (laughs) They're starting to label doors, okay? (laughs) Shikara, that... That wasn't there before, was it? No, it was not. I, uh, what does it mean? Yeah. That 
Is the door that goes to Victor? Victor? V? Yes. Uh, what to be in Victor? I, I've never been to Victor. Shikara, does that mean the boys have used the portal? And you were right. Certainly seems that way, doesn't it? Uh, I start looking at the other doors. Any other letters? Carvings? No, that just the one. Um, I mean, I hope they're in the cave. Still waiting for us. Let us go find out. Back to Golem. Yes. And uh, the three of you now step into an empty cave north of Golem. Those two are no end of trouble. I think we might be able to guess where they have been, but where they are now, who knows? Agreed. Okay, so where did you want to store your box? Is there another portal? Campbell's in Pisces, right? Yeah. He is, yes. That's a long walk. How long will it take to get to Pisces? You do have Buttercup. It'd probably take you upwards of two days. Take a trip to Pisces. That would take you uh, on a straight path. That would take you near around like the the tainted lake. Yeah. Do we wait here for Shaft and Falzarin to show up? Do we? I really would like to check on Campbell to make sure he is all right. I could make you a scroll of sending, but it's not. It's gonna take a day. Could you not? Do a sending spell yourself. Oh, yes, I could cast a spell. Sorry, I thought you wanted to... I can... Yes, I can check on him for you. That's fine. Send him a message and make sure he is okay. Yeah, let's let's send Campbell a message. So, if I cast sending... 25 words or less. Shikara, so let me know what you want to say. <sighs> I want... To ask him... If he is all right, I want to ask him if he has had any dealings with Isabella. I want to know if the sapphire box is still in his possession. I want to know if he needs me. Okay, I mean, he might not even know who Isabella is, but I guess if he's ran into her, he knows who she is, right? I would think so. Okay, any update from yourself at all? No. That is a conversation best to have in person. All right. All right, give me a minute. I'll send him the message. Thank you. And I will ask Campbell and think about Campbell and his little German accent and ask him if he's all right. (laughs) Ask him if he still has his box. Ask him if he's ran into anyone named Isabella or trouble and ask him if he needs help. (laughs) <laughs> so what are the 25 words you're saying? And I'm going to say... <laughs> That's a lot of asks. <laughs> and I'm going to say, um, love Shikara. <laughs> At the end of it. Okay, so you need me to count it out. Okay, all right. Are you all right? Do you have your box? S- sapphire box. Do you have your sapphire box? Do you need help? Have you met Isabella? Which is one word, but sounds like two. <laughs> that's that's good enough. Love, Shakara. 20. Boom. That's it. End of the show. Thanks for listening. But before you go, I got a couple of things I want to tell you about. Uh, you can find the Encourageable Party all over the interwebs. You can just go to EncourageableParty.com and you can find all the links there. While you're there, check out the Patreon. There's some really cool stuff you could do with the Patreon. Like, give inspiration to Shaft. Or, you can waste it and give it to one of those other mooks. Even worse, you could give it to Leland. Also, you can get access to mini campaigns and other cool stuff that we do. You're automatically entered into all contests. I mean, it's, it's really a great deal. Uh, the Encourageable Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. All ambient sounds and music provided by TabletopAudio.com. Intro and outro music is by Josh Jarvis, and you can email him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com if you need any music stuff. Okay, that's it. Now you can go. Happy adventuring!